Thank you so much for watching Rift TV. Now this interview is obviously with video, but I don't interview everybody on Zoom. That's why I put it on my Talkin' Rock with Meltdown podcast. We talk to rock artists from all over the genre. So check out Talkin' Rock with Meltdown wherever you get your podcasts. And now to today's video interview. Well, thanks so much for joining us. How are you? I'm great. We have a day off and we're in some parking lot in Amarillo. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. You were just here uh, in Detroit not that long ago. Are you still on the Scorpions tour? Yeah, it's uh, well, it ends the 21st of October, I think. Yeah. So oh. we have a few more weeks left. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is that is badass. I saw the uh, I saw the video of you guys uh, on this tour is unbelievable. I saw like, uh, you know, when you first met the band and stuff, how exciting was that? It was um, it was incredibly excited. I mean, as you can see in all those videos, I'm always like such an awkward nerd, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, tall nerd. I mean, everyone commented on that being that, um, you know, a little taller than Klaus. But um, no, it's been amazing. They've been so great and just awesome people to meet. And it's very inspiring. They're just so talented and legends. And they're also so nice, like yeah. really nice people. They've really taken care of us so well on this tour, like them and their crew, like everyone is amazing. So I, I'm hoping that we get to do more things with Scorpions. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how, how cool is that? That is awesome. I think uh, the Scorpions might have been one of the first like major bands I got a picture with like way back in the day. You weren't even thought of then when I met those guys for the first time. But you say <laughs> you say you're taller than Klaus, but who isn't taller than Klaus? I think I'm five foot six. I'm taller than he is, aren't I? Yeah, I'm I'm five eight, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how does uh first of all tell us a little bit about the history of of your band because you're you're relatively new over here in the states, right? Have you been over here before? Uh, well, we did Kiss Cruise 2018. Okay. And then we did the Kiss. Um, we got invited back by Kiss Kiss Army to do uh, a show at their pre party for the cruise in Miami. So it's been kind of like nothing like that we put out too much because it's been yeah like kind of under the radar but part of the kiss family <laughs> yeah. um yeah no this is our first north american tour uh and it's really exciting to get to do it at this level like i feel like we jumped some steps and we're fully aware and we're just really trying to be grateful i mean we are grateful and so, so happy about getting this opportunity and fully aware of how amazing it is and really taking advantage of every second of it and trying to deliver a, you know the best we can every show so people understand that we're just serving of this opportunity <laughs> yeah no doubt so um did, now were you guys uh on the tour when uh when when white snake the white snake played they played a few shows on this tour didn't they or no no they didn't do any uh, when they announced the tour, sorry, I just found something there. Um, when they announced the tour, uh, we were all on the bill. It was, you know, White Snake, Scorpions, and then we were the, I don't know what they call it, but like first supporting band or whatever. But we've been on the tour since they, you know, announced it. And then um, we actually never really, we haven't gotten any like, you know, inside information about what happened with. Uh, I guess David Coverdale's health yeah. but um, I'm hoping that he's doing better uh, whatever it might have been but uh, yeah they were supposed to be part of it and then they cancelled for obvious reasons and and um, yeah we've they've been I don't know how to say this in uh, without sounding weird but uh, it's been kind of like a blessing in disguise for us as a small band because we got a little longer set and the Scorpions crew has really made an effort to take care of us and, you know, help us as much as they can with everything they can. Like even having a camera guy film our show and having a like a proper lighting show and all these things that I don't necessarily know is the norm for an opening band to get. Um, so we're very happy and just like really, yeah, so grateful that they are so nice and you know, really care about us having a good time and a good experience. Yeah. It means and, so much. Yeah, no question. And um, yeah, I was, I was thinking about that earlier, you know, when Whitesnake gets off this tour, yeah, it's cool. The Scorpion said, oh, they give you a little bit more time, huh? And then, and then it's like, you know, it just kind of, does it put any, uh, more pressure on you guys or no? Mm, 
I haven't felt any necessarily, no, I haven't felt any pressure. I don't think any of us, I mean, yes, it is our first arena tour, but we're pretty, if there's something that we're really good at and really used to doing is performing. I mean, we, we, we toured extensively throughout Europe, you know, small club shows, big festivals and everything. So I think, I know that we were ready for this opportunity. We were just give us opportunity and we we're going to make sure to make the best out of it. And that's kind of how it felt like. So, no, I haven't felt any more pressure. Just excited to get 10 more minutes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. 10 more minutes on stage. So uh, what has your uh, experience been so far uh, since you said this is kind of like your first uh, proper North American tour of uh, the American crowds, the you know American uh, music, just the whole American experience. Um, Canadian, by the way, and Canadian. You guys have played some Canadian shows too, so. Yeah, we did. We did exactly. Um, I mean, I actually, I've, I've gone to school here. I went to school to Adam I in Los Angeles. So I, I've actually lived in Los Angeles before and a half years. It was um, a while back. So I kind of had an experience already, like, I already love the country, the people, everything, the culture, you know. Uh, and I think all of the girls, we all feel the same way. We've been really welcomed. Like every, like, I, I'd say like we're getting like a standing ovation on almost every show, which is crazy and mind blowing. So people here are clearly enjoying what we're doing. And uh, yeah, and we love them so much more for it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, we love America and Canada was awesome as well. And yeah, we're just having a really, really good time. I really love how people are very warm and welcoming. That's something that is not as common in like Sweden and in the North, you know, you need to know people for them to be like that. And here it's very like everyone just invites you in and like, yeah, we, we just meet, make friends along the way, which is really fun. And I really appreciate that about people here. And I must say that in Texas, it seems like everyone seems to like rock everywhere we go. But in Texas, it seems like even more intense, like they really live for rock. Like at least the audiences here have been crazy. And that's really fun. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. So growing up in Sweden and stuff, uh, where do you get your uh, musical influences from? Because uh, uh, what you guys seem to do in, in my mind is like kind of a throwback. Do you get that stuff from your parents, from older relatives or what? um I, I would say it's a combo uh we all have uh, really different musical backgrounds but i think most of us have been like we've grown up with parents that listen to a lot of different music my parents always listened to a lot of they were like the the beatles camp so we had beatles music at home and a lot of latin music and uh, yeah my family's from uruguay so so it's a very like mixed pot of music there yeah. uh but um I'd say that I actually like rock was something I found on my own and the person that I am, I always try to look into history and like, like with, with whatever genre that I'm into at the moment, or cause I listen to all kinds of music. I, as a younger person, I, I always try to see like, for example, in like hip hop and stuff where they're like, wh what sample did they use here, for example? And then you find some soul and you find some Motown song, you know, all these things. So, that's kind of how it's been for me. And yeah, so I found rock on my own. And uh, it's just funny when I started writing my own music, it was all blues rock. So I don't know, it kind of just came from my heart. I think from the mixture of music in my background, rock was just where my heart was at. And then I started trying to sing more like, um, like 80s songs, uh, you know, 80s rock songs, like, I and specifically Sebastian Bach, you know, uh, Skid Row. Yeah. Uh, I felt I could really relate to him as a singer. Um, and I started trying to sing Skid Row songs and really found my own voice doing that. So, yeah, it's a long story, but yeah, a lot of different styles have been in passing. <laughs> So for somebody that might be listening to this or watching this for the first time that that's never, uh, you know, heard you guys before, like, what, what how do you describe a uh, Thunder Mother? Mm, I'd say we have a very, our DNA is ACDC. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. That's when Philippa started the band, that's what she, um, she wanted to do like an, you know, an ACDC type of band. 
So that's something that we're always carrying with us. But um, we now, I mean, I didn't really tell you the story of the band, but me and the drummer, Emily, joined the band in 2017. And once we had joined the band, we then all started writing music together. And we all have different backgrounds. Like Emily is a huge Iron Maiden fan. And I'm a, I'm a big Prince fan. And like, we all have really different, you know, favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is now coming out in the songwriting. So it, it's a lot of like different, like I've always wanted to have like those kind of rappy, like, you know, Guns N' Roses, like uh, vibe songs, whatever. Yeah. And we have a few of those now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a mix. Um, and yeah, my brain is I'm super scattered brain. I don't remember the question. I just oh, went off. No, I was just else. curious, like like how you would describe your band as someone that's never heard it. That's all. It's like you know, I I kind of feel like like what you're saying. It's like kind of a throwback to just straight ahead rock bands of of particularly the '80s. That's why that's why I feel when I when I hear it. Yeah, the thing is, I think the '80s thing is coming more and more. But uh, initially, we were more like oh '70s. I mean, we all like you know. Okay. The, the Scorpions crew, they say that they think that we are a mix between Kiss and ABBA, which I've never heard before. And I thought that was really interesting. I don't know if it's our melodies and our, uh, you know, the harmonies that we do or whatever it is. But I, I, I think that's a huge compliment. Um, but yeah, some people to keep it simple, usually, and you, you won't hear it as much on the Scorpions because we try to do like... Um, a more mid-tempo vibe set because okay. we don't want to we don't want to go full-on crazy <laughs> you know i need to match the opening band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i think it's a combo between acdc and motorhead initially and then that has evolved and it's more like you can hear a little van halen little maiden little Zeppelin. like it's such a mix of everything <laughs> Now, all the bands you're mentioning are all uh, male bands. What what kind of female bands? I mean, the exception of Ava, I suppose. But uh, I mean, are you into like, uh, you know, Pretty Reckless, uh, Hailstorm, that kind of thing? To be completely honest, I had never heard of the Hailstorm before I joined the band when people started comparing my voice to Lucy Hale's hmm. voice, um, which is a super nice compliment. But I hadn't really heard of them. Pretty Reckless, I think they're really awesome. Um uh, but yeah, no, I, I guess inspiration wise, unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of female artists that inspired this particular project. I mean, yes, Janis Joplin is always in the back of my mind, but um, in the way I perform and like try to always bring, you know, real feelings to whatever I'm singing and all these things. Um, but yeah, maybe the girls, I think both the guitar player, I mean, uh, Philippa and Mona, our guitar players, our uh, bass player, I'm guessing they've probably been inspired by Joan Jad as well. I mean, she is a legend, but uh, I'm hoping that it's going to be that we're part of like, you know, changing that for future, you know, girls and stuff like that, because I, I didn't find, I personally didn't find that many musicians that I could relate to, you know, vocally females. That's why I said like Sebastian Bach was one of the first singers that I was just like, okay, I, I, I feel like I sing more like he does. Uh, and I couldn't really find myself in other females, you know, rock singer, mm -hmm. female rock singers vibes at that time. And that has changed with time, but um, yeah, no. Um, unfortunately, a lot of male <laughs> inspiration, but I think... We're it's mixing right. it up and making it own, and yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's okay, you know. I mean, you know, to each their own. I mean, I wasn't sure if you know if you had grown up on a, a lot of female singers like Stevie Nicks or you know that that kind of thing or Hart or whatever the case is. But uh, yeah, I love I love Stevie Nicks, and when I was a kid, I loved the Spice Girls. So yeah, there was a girl power right there, but it's not rock. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, hey, you know what? If if you're singing, I, I talked to I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, somebody says that they hear a lot of pop music because their kids are around. It was uh, Michael Starr, actually, from uh, Steel Panther. And, you know, so he, he says he hears a lot of pop music in, in, in his in his day to day life. But of course, you know, he's a metal guy. So it's some of some of that stuff kind of influences him a little bit in his singing as well. Yeah, I think it's good as a musician to be open. A good song is a good song, regardless of the genre. Uh, so for me, I'm very like mood based, you know. Um, so, yeah, I listen to a lot of different things.
So you said that you've been here in America before for several years and stuff. I have the other girls and, and if not, what, what do they think about, you know, this, the, just the, the general aspect of touring through this country? Um, I mean, long distances, it's, uh, I mean, that's crazy. We're really happy that we're on a nightliner so we can sleep and, you know, <laughs> we can yeah. travel throughout the night and that, you know, enjoy the days. That's really major, but uh the girls are loving it they're we're all really enjoying it we get to see so many different places walk around just explore and and uh, and on top of that obviously play arenas which is huge so it's it's all good on our side we're just very happy now it's do you guys do you guys do you guys watch the, this do you guys watch the scorpion show nightly or have you seen it and you're kind of you kind of move along no i've seen it it depends uh because now we've been starting to do our own signing sessions okay. straight after the show so it, the first weeks i did see them um a lot and i love their show and it's so freaking good and inspiring um yeah they're really impressive guys like you can't believe that they're in the 70s and jumping around and having that amount of energy it's like i wish i can be like that when i'm in my 70s uh, so I've seen a lot of it and I'm hoping to catch even more and, you know, but we have been doing our own signing sessions. So while they're playing, we have to like shower, get ready and then go. So it's like still work kind for, us. you know, we still have to get stuff done to maximize this whole thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. You guys got to take advantage of this. This is a great opportunity for you guys. I you know, I, 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 I kind of know the story a little bit and I was like, wow, this is cool. So, so what kind of upbringing did you have? Uh, I have a daughter who's 21 and I always tell her, I go, do what you want to do. You do your thing. You know, don't let no one stop you. Did, did your parents always uh, uh, give you some advice like that and always try to push you forward? Absolutely. My, um, let's see here. Well, my mom was always kind of like, you guys have to get an education. That was really important, but she didn't really care you know, as long as it was like, I got educated, like I did, uh, um, I got the associate's degree in vocal performance and then mm. I did music business and all these things. She's just happy that I have some degrees and like, I'm, you know, um, but I, yeah, she's always just pushed me, but I've always been very stubborn and known what I want. And that's something that she tells me now that she's very proud of the fact that I've like known that I wanted to do this since I was very, very young. And I've just always gone ahead and I guess been very stubborn with my dreams. And then like, I guess in high school, whereas was when I personally just like kind of had to be honest with myself and be like, you need to, you need to really try to do the music thing because that's where my heart has always been. And I know it's tough, but I think it's, it's really important to not like live with regret. And at that age, I mean, it's better to really just try and, you know, you might fail, but at least you tried and you don't have to look back on your life and be like, Oh damn, I didn't do that. I should have done that. Like that's been such a big fear for me. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's like my own drive, but also having people around me that support the dream and, you know, yeah. But none of them, I'm the only one doing music in my family. So I'm like, I'm the black sheep. And I think they've been questioning my choices quite a lot, but um, it's starting to pay off. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, hey, you're touring with the Scorpions. There's worse places to be in the world. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Well, just a couple of things here for you uh, uh, left. Um, first of all, uh, what do you guys have coming up in the future after this tour? Are you guys uh, going to be uh, uh, finished for the year? Or what do you guys have going on as far as the band? Uh, uh, any new music, anything uh, going coming down the pike? Well, we uh, we just released a new album album on the 19th of August. So we're going to oh, try okay. to work. I thought it was earlier in the year. Okay, gotcha. No, no, but we might, we want to do, uh, I think, uh, a, a video for the ballad uh, Borrowed Time, mm -hmm. which I think we're aiming to release the end of October. But as far as shows goes, we have like, you know, one offs here and there. And then we are going to take a break. And then we have a more extensive European tour, I think, from the, the end of February to May. So, yeah, we're going to just tour. Can I swear? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're fine. We're gonna tour the shit out of the album, which we were <laughs> never, we were not allowed to do on with Heat Waves. So now we're gonna really do play as much as we can live with this new album. Yeah, the last out. record came yeah. out in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, correct? 
Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, yeah, the pandemic, you know, hits and it's like it just sits there. Right. And so the new records out now this summer. And so you guys at least get to go out and play some of that stuff. Are you you talking about a European tour? Are you guys going to be going out uh, by yourself or are you hopping on a tour like you're doing now? We'll see. Oh, OK. I, I mean, we have a, no, no, no. But we we definitely we have our own uh, <laughs> thing, um, our own headlining tour in Europe. Okay. For, that's a for sure thing. And then let's see whatever happens, happens. All right. Final thing here for you. Who's the greatest Swedish hockey player to ever play in the NHL? Hockey? <laughs> I don't watch hockey. My knowledge of hockey is like Mighty Ducks. Uh, what? Um, it's Nick Lindstrom. That Nick Lindstrom. That's it. End of discussion. Nick Lindstrom. I thought he was the what's his name that does the the commercial for uh, Head and Shoulders in Sweden. Oh, They're really uh, attractive one. I think he's like a um, yeah, Lundqvist. He's like a goalie, I think. Is that what's it called in hockey? Yeah, Lundqvist uh, from uh, New York Rangers. Yeah, Henrik Lundqvist. Henning Lundqvist. Is that his name? Yeah. But yeah, but I guess, yeah, I don't know that much about hockey. <laughs> I really like those movies, though. They're very, like, they're the big part of my childhood. <laughs> the, the, the which one? The Mighty Ducks. Oh, Mighty Ducks. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Well, uh, here in Detroit, of course, we had uh, we had Johan Franzen and uh, Nick Lindstrom and uh, Thomas Holmstrom and Henrik Zetterberg. We've had all sorts of uh, Swedes here, so... <laughs> So many Swedish hockey players. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, good luck to you guys. And uh, I'm sorry I missed you a couple of weeks ago. I was going to, I had tickets to the show. And then uh, I don't know if, if you knew when you, when you played here in Detroit, but uh, uh, there was a big storm that blew through the day beforehand. And uh, it was day number two of not having any power in my house. So I, I opted to go home and try to get that rolling. We, so, but uh, I, I missed the show, but I'm sure in Detroit rock city it was, it was just fine. Yeah. I mean, that was the one in Pine Knob, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that show, when we didn't notice anything. I Oh, wow, I'm so shocked that you guys went through that. Shit. Yeah. I hope it's, I mean, it, it's better now. Oh, yeah, everything's fine. But I just had to kind of get, you know, I had to take care of my family and my house. And I, you know, the Scorpions people were so nice. They got me hooked up with tickets. And then I emailed them. I'm like, I, I can't go. I got to get this, uh, you know, taken care of. But I wish I would have seen you guys because I, because there is a big buzz about you guys playing, and a lot of people have been impressed. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. But I do, I am feel, I feel very proud of how hard we're working, and and you know, the response from the audience are pretty clear, and it's really fun. I feel like people really enjoy the kind of rock that we do, mm -hmm. and it, and there's not many bands doing it anymore, uh, so. Let's hope we're part of some sort of rock and roll revival with just like fun and good time rock and roll. <laughs> That's right. Hey, it's all about having a good time. So, well, Miss Mancini, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for having me.